movie thoughts. I like how people can still kind of debate over who killed who and, you know, who was calling, you know, which one of them was on the phone, which one was the killer in this or that scene, you know, because we're never entirely sure. They could both be, you know, one I would say is pretty there's a pretty good argument for is Stu killing the principal because he does seem to be heading back towards the school you know after talking about the party so yeah it seems like it really could be I just gotta love the end where it's revealed that those are the two you know and they're completely psychotic and then they start, you know, quoting movies. You know, earlier it was like, oh, maybe it's Jamie Kennedy because he's, like, obsessed with horror movies. You know, and then you realize, oh, they're obsessed too. But remember, horror movies don't create psychopaths, they just make them more creative. And, you know, they fool her with, you know, the corn syrup that they used, that they also used for pig's blood and carry. All the references, it, it just really works. And this kind of toying with the meta kind of thing, you know, is it real, is it, you know, several times they talk about what's happening to them as if it were a movie and, you know, denying, no, it's not a movie, oh, it's all a movie, you know, I quite like that, I think it works out really well. And then you have, you know, Craven himself dressing up as Freddy Krueger for, you know, a blink and you'll miss it reference and all the little little dig that Craven gets at all the Nightmare on Elm Street sequels with, you know, having Barrymore say, you know, I like the first one, the rest of them sucked. And just that very first scene, it's amazing how well he manages the tension and suspense for how short amount of time that scene actually lasts. You know, it's what, less than 20 minutes? And we really are scared to death for this girl that we don't know at all. You know, the first thing we see is just the phone call. I would also have to say it's the best, you know, again, haven't seen the fourth one yet, but of the trilogy, it's the best ghost face dialogue, you know, the perfectly cast voice also, Roger Jackson, you know, perfect voice for this kind of thing, and just his lines in that very first scene on the phone, absolutely perfect, you know, the little, you know, he messes up and accidentally says, I want to know who I'm looking at, I mean, I want to know who I'm talking to, and the, just the performance there, just spot on. And, yeah, just in general, by far the best lines. The whole game, you know, just really works. I like how they bring it back in the climax. You know, you have to answer our questions if you get it right. If you get it wrong, you die. If you get it right, you die. And just the acting of both Ulrich and Lillard in that last scene, the, the manic eyes and just the psychotic, you know, Lillard, Lillard was just a spaz until then, he was kind of obnoxious, but you could sometimes laugh at his corny jokes, and then suddenly he's a psychotic spaz, you know, he's still a spaz, but just, and, and just the, the thing of them starting to stab each other, and this whole, you know, they're that insane, they're so certain that it's going to work that they're willing to stab each other, and Ulrich just digs in, you know, with that knife, and Lillard is like, I'm, I, you gotta stop, I'm, I'm getting woozy here, and, you know, a little later, he's like, I, I think you stabbed me too much, I think I'm dying, man, and just the whole, it just works so well, it, he just has, Wes Craven really has a talent for just, making this really disturbing, really insane kind of horror stuff really work because 
in spite of how extreme that last scene is, when you really stop to think about it, try to sit down and actually count how many scares, how many people show up that you thought were dead, how many people, how many, you know, psych outs it has. Try to actually count and like look at it. It's, you know, I haven't actually done this, but it's really amazing. I think I keep forgetting just how far that last scene goes, and yet it isn't excessive, you know, it manages to never lose us, never completely throw us off. That really takes talent, you know, to make something like that work, because if you go just a little too far, you might lose the audience permanently, and you might, you know, you might not be able to get us hooked again, but it just never loses us. It just, we're there all the way. I like how it just keeps throwing murder suspects at us, how it incorporates, you know, what happened to Mrs. Prescott, you know, her mother, the, you know, the mention of Cotton Weary and the whole thing with, you know, oh, but if I didn't get the right one, you know, maybe he's still out there and the, the whole storytelling. You know, that scene, you know, they, they don't feel the need to have these overly expository lines. You know, the dialogue feels natural. It feels like these two, you know, they're best friends. If it hadn't been a conversation between her and her best friend, they wouldn't have been able to be so honest about it. She would have gotten defensive, you know. And that's how we gradually find out what it was about her mother and then in the final scene it's you know eventually revealed you know when they're talking about what motive Ulrich has I like that Lillard's just peer pressure he's way too sensitive it's you know her mother slept with his father and made his mom leave them you know and that just devastated him just the whole thing, you know, because you gotta have that, you know, in the slasher, there's gotta be the, you know, the mythology. You gotta have this kind of, it's because of this, or it might be because of this, anyway. You need to have some, some backstory, kind of. Otherwise, it just doesn't quite work as well. Even if the backstory turns out to be bogus, you need to have something, you know, those are the most successful slashers, anyway. And I like when, that even when the create, then when the death scenes get kind of creative, they're still not completely insane, you know? I mean, the wildest this gets is Tatum in the garage door, you know, having her neck broken there. That's still something you can kind of relate to, you know, maybe not being lifted by a garage door opening, but having your neck broken, that's still something you can understand, you know, and then the TV being smashed over Lillard, yeah, that, um, anyway, I suppose that's about what there is to say if you want to ask about anything that I didn't